Good day everyone. Today, I, together with my other group mates, will be discussing all about roofing works, its materials, accessories, chosen works, and its basic estimate. But before that, let us first know what roofing means. Roofing is defined as the top covering of a building, including all materials and construction necessary to support it on the walls of a building, providing protection against rain, snow, sunlight, extremes of temperature, and wind. We have three elements in the design of a roof. We have the construction, which is the method. The durability deals on the strength of the roof to withstand its form and the material. The material of a roof may range from indigenous materials, just like grass, to aluminum sheet and precasted concrete. The shape of roofs differ greatly from region to region. The main factors which influence the shape of the roof are the climate and the materials available for roof structure and the outer covering. There are many variations in these types. Beach roof, including gabled, hip, and skillion roof, make up the greatest number of domestic roofs. Some roofs follow organic shapes either by architectural design or because of flexible material such as thatch that has been used in the construction. Here are the basic roof types. Gable roof. A gable roof is the classic, most commonly occurring roof shape in those parts of the world with cold and temperate climates. They are classified into various types. We have open gable, box gable, and front gable. Simple hip roof. It is a type of roof where all four sides feature symmetrical slopes towards the walls, with no gables or vertical sides to the roof. They are also classified according to their designs. Pyramid hip roof, cross hip roof, gambrel roof, flat roof, butterfly roof, skillion and lean to roof. Knowing various roof types could help us determine material cost and most especially the estimate in making such design. But before we dig deeper to estimate, let us first discuss the basic roofing parts. Cutting a roof structure into a section, we could see how it looked like as the picture shown in the screen. We have the outer skin in the form of either sheet or tile. Roof battens or purlins, which is the horizontal structural member along the length of the roof. We have the rafter, which is a sloped structural member supporting the roof. The eaves are the lower border of a roof that overhangs the wall. Fascia is a straight board that runs along the lower edge of the roof and a gutter or channel that runs around the perimeter of a roof and collects rainwater. Now, let's proceed to roofing materials. First is the corrugated metal roofing. Galvanized iron sheet is the most common material popularly known as GI sheet, either plain or corrugated. Plain sheet is used for roofing gutter, flashing, downspout, ridge hip, and valley roll. Its standard commercial size is 90 by 240 centimeters long. Corrugated galvanized iron sheet, on the other hand, is widely used for roofing and sidings, having a standard width of 80 centimeters with varying length from 150 to 360 centimeters. Its thickness is measured in terms of gauge number from 14 to 30. It's nice to know that as gauge number increases, the sheet becomes thinner. Note that gauge 26 is extensively used for roofing and gauge 24 is specified for gutters and valley rolls. It is said that distinguishing thickness between gauges of GI sheet is difficult even with the aid of a caliper, and gauges miss thickness expressed in terms of hundreds of an inch. That is why the only way which one could be certain that he is buying the right thickness of a sheet is by weight measure. The table that we would be flashing on the screen was prepared to present the various weight of GI sheet according to its length and gauge number. On the leftmost column, you can see the varied gauge number available in the market, and the above row are the varied length in meters and feet. You can find this table on the third edition of Max Fajardo's Simplified Construction Estimate under Roofing Materials, page 204. Since GI sheet is the most common roofing material being widely used in construction, particularly on residential buildings, and its abundance in our market, 
This discussion will primarily focus on GI roofing estimate. Before learning the estimate pertaining to roofing materials, here are the following important basic information that you should consider before knowing the required numbers of materials, particularly in corrugated GI sheets. First, we must verify the side lapping. There are two options to consider, one and a half or two and a half. Side lapping is the amount by which one material overlaps the adjacent one along its side. The effective width covering per sheet for one and a half corrugation is 0.70 and 0.60 for two and a half corrugations. While the standard end lapping joint is from 25 to 30 centimeters long, knowing the end overlapping is important in determining the length of the sheet to be used. Spacing of purlins should be proportionally adjusted to the length of the GI sheets to avoid unnecessary cutting or excessive overlapping. In short, the length of the roof sheet governs the spacing distance of purlins. Here is the table for an effective covering. The first column are the varied standard sizes of roofing sheets available. Next to it is the effective side lapping and lastly are the recommended purlin spacing. You can find this table in page 206 on Max Fajardo's 3rd edition of Simplified Construction Estimate or we may pause for a moment for you to take a screen snap. So since we already know the basic roofing considerations, let's proceed to the next, which is the estimate. I, with my other groupmates, will be going to discuss estimates of GI roof and its accessories. There are seven steps to solve an estimate of a GI roof. If you are interested to learn the basic steps, this is the right time for you to lean and listen. First, you need to determine the length of the purlin along the gutter line. Its distance is perpendicular with the roof direction. Next, suppose you already got the length. You divide it by the effective width covering of one GI sheet using either 0.70 for one and a half corrugations or 0.60 for two and a half corrugation. The result will be the number of sheets for the entire row. Third is determine the length of the rafter or top cord. Choose the right combination of roofing sheets that will satisfy the rafter's length considering the 25 to 30 centimeters and lapping. Say you have 4.8 meters. You have a combination of 3 meters and 2.1 meters length of GI sheets. Fourth step is to multiply the result you get in step number 2 by each length of each sheet combination as found in step number 3. After determining the result, the next step is to determine the number of J nails, rabbits, and washers in kilograms using the table flashed on the screen. The number of nails or rabbits that will be used in a single roofing sheet can be determined using the table provided. For a 1.5 meters length of roofing sheets, there is an equivalent 40 numbers of nails or rabbit, and so on and so forth. The next step is to take note that the number of plain anchor strap and lead washer is the same quantity of rabbits. Lastly, is to find the number of plain GA sheets required for anchor strap with the aid of this table. For a 2 by 3 inch of purlins, 1 by 9 inch of GA strap must be used. For you to fully understand the roofing estimate, we will be showing you a sample problem. Supposed, we are about to find the number of roofing sheets using 2.5 corrugations together with the nails needed based on the figure being shown in the screen. The first step is to find the length of purlins along the gutter line. So we have 18 meters to be divided by 0.60 since the problem requires 2.5 corrugations. Dividing 18 by 0.60 will be equal to 30. So for the entire row, we need 30 pieces of corrugated sheets. Next is to measure the length of the rafter which is 6 meters and find the right combination including the 30 centimeters and lapping. The table shown on the screen will guide us to identify the right combination of GA sheet on a given rafter length. Say for 6 meters length of rafter, we utilize 3.6 and 2.7 meters roof sheet. 
you might wonder why we chose 3.6 and 2.7. Simply because if we combine 3.6 and 2.7, we get 6.3. Now, the excess length of the rafter which is 30 centimeters, is intended for the end lapping of the roof sheets. Next step is to multiply each sheet length by the result we obtain from step number 1. So we have 30 pieces of 3.6 and 30 pieces of 2.7 meters corrugated roof sheets. Take note that this is only the one side of the roof. So for the other side, we double the quantity of the roof sheets. In computing for the umbrella nails, we refer to the table that was shown earlier on the number of nails or rivets per sheet. So for 3.6 meters, 26 numbers of nails is recommended and 22 nails for 2.7 meters. So we multiply 60 pieces of 3.6, we got 1,560 pieces of nails, and 60 pieces of 2.7 equals to 1,320 pieces. Total, we got 2,880. To convert it into kilograms, we refer to the table shown earlier, which is the quantity of roof accessories in kilogram. For umbrella nails, we have 120. We divide the total of 2,880 by 120. We have 24 kilograms. After you completed the total materials, it is very important to finalize the estimated materials by making a summary. So you could use it in multiplying the cost of each material depending on the supplier you have. So from the problem, we obtain the following data. 60 pieces 3.6 meters corrugated roof sheets 60 pieces 2.7 meters corrugated roof sheets and 24 kilograms or approximately 25 kilograms of nails let us move forward to other common roofing materials beginning we have asbestos roofing unlike gi roofing where accessories made from gutter down to the smallest anchor strap are made out from standard size Estimating asbestos roofing is much simpler because all roof accessories and parts to be used are all factorially made, ready for installation. There are different kinds of asbestos roofing. We have the standard corrugated sheet, 4V corrugated sheets, Placa Romana, Canaletas, Tenker corrugated sheet, and Ardex lightweight corrugated sheet. Remembering the estimate of the product will surely help us since it is said that roofing materials and accessories for asbestos roofing are all ready-made. We will be flashing on the screen the technical data for each type that will be helpful for our estimate computation. For the corrugated sheets, 4V corrugated asbestos sheet, Tencor, Canaletas, our next. Let's proceed to color band clip loop. The table shown is the clip loop technical data. For the Benawi horizontal metal tile, here is its cross section figure and its technical data. Let us continue to Marcelo roofing system. This type of roofing material that has width of 1.14 meter and length of 1.11 meter. It has an effective width coverage of 0.95 meter an effective air coverage per sheet of 0.92 square meter. The color band custom orb is a lightweight yet strong roof and walling material. Each piece of color band custom orb has normal width of 0.86 meter with an effective coverage of 0.76 meter. It has a length of 1.35 meter and are available in a longer length through special order. Upon installation, it is most important to take note of crest fixing on the color band custom orb sheets for roofing and body fixing for wall cladding usage. Each piece of a Milano long span steel wix has steel based thickness of 0.40 mm and a total coated thickness of 0.46 mm. Each of these steel bricks weigh up to 4.53 kg per square meter and 3.44 kg per length. It has an effective coverage of 0.67 m while its length spans up to 6 meters and are available for longer length through special order. Upon its installation like most of the corrugated roofing materials, these long span steel bricks are fastened through the crest and to the roof support. 
a Coleman trim disc titan has steel based thickness of 0.40 mm and a total coated thickness of 0.46 mm. Upon installation, the minimum slope for single sheet is 3 degrees and 5 degrees for roof width and depth. An asphalt shingle is a type of roof or wall shingle that uses asphalt for waterproofing. The dimensions of roof shingles vary, but the common size is 12 inches by 3 to 6 inches long. The UPVC multi-layer roofing sheets is a modern rigid 3-layer and plasticized polyvinyl chloride roofing sheets. This UPVC is the best replacement for conventional asbestos and metal galvanized iron roofing. The UPVC roofing sheet has a thickness that varies from 1.5 mm, 2 mm, 2.5 mm, and 3 mm. Its length spans up to 11,800 mm and width of 900 mm. After learning the different roofing materials and its technical data, let's proceed to roofing accessories. Gutters are used to prevent water ingress into the fabric of the building by channeling rainwater away from the exterior of walls and foundations of the building. Downspout, on the other hand, is a pipe that drains rainwater from the gutter down to the ground. Flashings are thin pieces of impervious material installed to prevent the passage of water into the building from joints in a roofing. The ridge, valley, and hip rows are roof accessories used to prevent the penetration of rainwater through the space that couldn't be covered by roofing materials such as GI sheets. The fascia board is the long straight board that runs along the lower edge of the roof. Soffit on the other hand is the underside of an architectural structure. Rivets are heated pin or bolt of metal used to connect metal to metal, specifically at flashing points. Washers are a flat thin ring used in joints to ensure tightness and prevent leakage. Right before the installation of your roofing materials, you need to ensure some preparatory works that are needed to be considered in order to avoid mistakes and faulty roofing installation. For the preparatory works of roofing accessories, we have the following. Furlines should have been placed and spaced properly to fit the length of the roofing materials to be installed. You should also make sure that the center line of the purlins at end laps shall be 15 cm from bottom line end laps and intermediate purlins are placed equidistant with each other. And you must ascertain that the top of the purlin should be at the same plane. Since you already know the preparatory works, let's jump to installation and estimate of roofing accessories. For the installation of ridge, hip, and valley rolls, we have to take note that the ridge and hip rolls shall lap at least 25cm of roof sheets. For computing the estimate, we will use the figure shown in the screen as our sample roofing. Take note that the estimating procedure of ridge roll, hip roll, valley roll are the same as well as the gutter and flashing. For the first procedure, we need to find the total length of the area of installation of the roof accessories. For the ridge, we have 70 meters plus 30 meters for a total of 100 meters. For the hip, we have 10.61 meters multiplied by 5 for a total of 53.05 meters. For the valley, we have 10.61 meters. For the second procedure, we have to divide the total length from the first procedure by the effective length of the roof accessory to determine the total number of needed roof accessory. Take note that the effective length of these roofing accessories are different. Refer to the table shown for their effective length data. For the third procedure, we need to determine the total width of the roof accessory. As shown, the width of ridge, hip, and valley roll are the same which is 0.45 meter. For the fourth procedure, we need to divide the standard width of a plain GI sheet which is 0.90 meter by the width of the roof accessory. By doing so, we can determine the number of the roof accessory that can be made from every piece of GI sheet. As we can see, the ridge, hip, and valley rows have the same recommended width, and for that, we just need to divide 0.90 by 0.45, and the result is two pieces. For the last procedure, we need to divide the result in procedure 2 by the result of procedure 4. For the ridge, we divide 46 by 2, the result is 23 pieces. For the hip, we divide 24 by 2, the result is 12 pieces. For the valley, we divide 5 by 2, the result is 2.5 pieces. Therefore, we need 23 plain GI sheets for the ridge roll, 12 plain GI sheets for the hip rolls, and 2 and a half plain GI sheets for the valley roll. For the estimate of the flashing, it is the same procedure from the estimate of ridge, hip, and valley rolls. So first, we find the total length of the flashing. We have 
4.5 multiplied by 4, the result is 18 meter. Second, we divide the length to be the effective length of a flashing which is 2.30 meter, as indicated in the table. We have 18 divided by 2.30, the result is 5.65 or we say 6 pieces of flashing. Third is to determine the total width of a flashing as shown in the screen, so the total is 0.45 meter. Fourth, we divide the standard width of one plane GI sheet which is 0.90 meter by 0.45 meter and we have two flashing that can be made from one GI sheet. Last is to divide the result of procedure 2 by the result of procedure 4, so we have 6 divided by 2, the result is 3, therefore, our sample roofing will require three plain GI sheet for the flashing. The procedure for the estimate of gutter is also the same as flashing and reach rolls divide the number of required gutter which is 9 by 2. Therefore, the required plain GI sheet for the gutter are 4 and a half sheets. Let's proceed to roof drainage. The roof drainage is designed to flush water, debris, and any other type of precipitation off the roof and into appropriate areas. Drain pipe. It is a pipe that carries rainwater from the roof of a building to the ground. Overflow pipe. It is mainly used for emergency secondary drainage system if the primary roof drainage is clogged. Downspout. It is a pipe for carrying rainwater from a rain gutter. The purpose of a downspout is to allow water from a gutter to reach the ground without dripping or splashing down the building structure. After learning the various roofing materials and accessories, we move on to trusses works. A truss is a structure that consists of members organized into connected triangles so that the overall assembly behaves as a single object. Trusses are most commonly used in bridges, roofs, and towers. We will be showing you different kinds of trusses. King post truss, queen post truss, how truss, brand truss, fan truss, North Light Roof Truss Quadrangular Roof Truss Parallel Cord Roof Truss Raised Hill Roof Truss and Scissor Roof Truss And now here are the truss materials Timber Roof Truss Wooden trusses are generally cheaper than steel trusses However, they don't last as long Timber is a natural material It cannot stand up to the elements as well as steel Timber trusses may warp and bow over time which can cause structural damage to the rest of the building. Wood is also susceptible to rot and insect infestations. Timber trusses are also more likely than steel to be damaged in wild weather conditions. Despite this risk, many opt for timber frames because they seem more economical. Steel roof truss Steel roof trusses are usually more expensive than wood trusses, but you can expect them to last a lot longer. Chemical treatments aren't needed to maintain the frame and insect infestations aren't a risk. They are also lightweight, making them easier and quicker to transport and install. What's more, steel frames can be recycled easily. Steel is a good choice for the environmentally conscious home or a business owner. Although steel frame roof trusses require more skill to install, an experienced team should be able to fit your steel trusses quickly and efficiently. For the estimate of the roof truss, we will use a sample truss of a gable roof that requires three whole trusses for its roofing. The figure on the screen shows the measurement of the parts of the truss. For the first procedure, we have to get the total length of the parts of the truss and multiply it by 3, which is the number of trusses required. For the top cords, we have 4.5 plus 4.5 equals to 9. Multiply by 3, the result is 27 meters of total length for the top cords of the trusses. For the bottom cord, we have 6 multiplied by 3, the result is 18 meters of total length for the bottom cords of the trusses. For the web members, we have 1 piece of 1.5 meter, 2 pieces of 1.5 meter, 2 pieces of 1 meter, 2 pieces of 0.50 meter, and 2 pieces of 1.2 meter web members for a total of 9.9 .9, or we say 10 meters multiplied by 3, the result is 30 meters total length for the web members of the trusses. Note that we rounded off our length. For the second procedure, we have to add all of the total lengths from the first procedure if we will be using a 6mm angle bars for our trusses. 
We have 27 plus 18 plus 30. The result is 75 meters of total length of angle bar needed for the three truss of the roofing. The last procedure is to divide the total length from the second procedure by 6 meters, which is the commercial length of a 6 millimeter bar angle bar here in the Philippines. We have 75 divided by 6, the result is 12.5, therefore we need 13 pieces of 6 millimeter angle bars for the truss of our roofing. To sum up today's discussion, learning roof and trusses works are essential for us in determining various roof types that will be used in our designs. Though these are just the basics, but this is an avenue to a more advanced learning. We hope you digest every topic we discussed. Thanks for listening and stay safe.